Peter, let me start with you. What do you make of the news that the transponder was turned off and the plane made the significant turn? What does that tell you? How, how easy is it, how difficult is it to turn off a transponder? Can it just break? No, it's, 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 it's not difficult, and pilots can do it. Uh, although the circumstances of them being able to do it or wanting to do it is, is, is simply uh, inexplicable. They wouldn't want to do that. You don't want to fly blind to your air traffic controllers and to other aircraft. The real problem in this so far, Anderson, is the, how the investigation is being conducted. This is a military-led investigation. There are protocols and there's a treaty signed that should be governing this investigation that would allow other countries to step in and give assistance, that we have a standing to do that. And so far, the Malaysians have chosen not to exercise that treaty. It's being run by the military, and we've got real chaos. Do, do we know why they haven't exercised that treaty? Is it just a point of, of pride? Well, I mean, they are, they are a signatory to the treaty. This is the, the International Civil Aviation Organization Annex 13. Uh, and if you have an accident, uh, it sets out the protocols. The NTSB would be the American uh, accredited representative there. They have not been involved yet wow. in helping the Malaysians. And David, you say that, that this is turning to really one of the biggest mysteries of all time. Are you encouraged by this new information, the new focus on, on the Straits of, of Malacca? And do you understand why it, it took this long for the information to, to, to come out? Uh, Anderson, I, I, you know, the one thing we have to go on is uh, solid facts, the real evidence. And that, to me, up until today, was the last known position of that plane. If I, if I had a team on the sidelines waiting to go with a ship mobilized with search gear, this would be really frustrating to say not only is it not here in the spot we thought it is, it's in another ocean on the other side of this peninsula. I mean, uh, truly frustrating. But on the other hand, you've got to go with the no stun un 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 unturned uh, theory, too, that that plane's got to be someplace and they need to check out these leads, but really frustrating and really perplexing. And, and just because that was the last place, it, uh, according to these, these uh, Malaysian military, that, that it was on the radar, that doesn't necessarily mean that it, something happened to it in that spot. It could just be, at that point, Sean, flying below, below radar. Yeah, that, that, that's true. Yeah. Uh, again. Okay. Sean, go ahead. Yeah, that, that, that's right, Anderson. I mean, you, you, you don't know until, uh, until you actually find the physical evidence. Building on David's point, you know, there are four competing theories of what's occurred here, and we've really got to look at all the facts, whether it be terrorism, hijacking, pilot error, or mechanical failure. At this point, without any real physical evidence, I think you've got to look at all the people that are involved. In three of those competing theories, there are people that would have been involved in, in those first three, and perhaps even in a mechanical failure, there may be people involved. I think from an investigative perspective, You've got to look at who the people were, the people that were on the plane, the people that were on the ground, the pilots in, 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 those, uh, in that aircraft. Uh, and that's, you've got to chase those facts fully to try and develop this to full conclusion. But, but, Sean, in terms of mechanical failure, does it make sense that the transponder would be turned off? I mean, is that possible just with mechanical failure, the transponder would just stop working? So I'm not an aviation expert, but what, from what I've heard from the aviation experts, if there were some catastrophic failure and all the electricity to that aircraft was, was uh, shut off, that it could turn off the transponder. Peter, does that, does that jive with what you understand as well? Well, well it, it, you know, theoretically it could, but, but remember, the 777 has multiple redundancies for this kind of uh, potential failure. And as a last resort, it has what's known as a ramjet generator. They can drop this generator, deploy deploys beneath the aircraft it, uh, and the uh, forward speeds generate enough electricity to run their basic avionics and to run their transponder. So it really is, is, is very perplexing. So Peter, yesterday on the program, I mean, I talked to a number of former pilots, all of whom believed something catastrophic and quick must have happened. If what we now have learned today about this change of direction and the plane flying in the completely opposite direction is true, does that rule out something catastrophic, the fact that the plane was able to, I mean, change direction, was able to continue to fly? Well, it, it implies that it was under some sort of human control. And that's, that's the issue for the Malaysians to start getting other people involved in the investigation, to start looking, getting other experts to review the radar tapes, to review making inquiries, 
whose radar was turned on that night? Were there any warships in the Straits that had their radar turned on? We need to get as much evidence as possible from the radar to help us figure out where this plane is. And, and David, you point out that the Straits of Malacca, they're relatively shallow, but if the plane turned and ended up in the open sea to the north even, the depths there get, get much deeper. Yeah, in the Gulf of Thailand and the southern parts of the Straits, it's fairly shallow. In fact, it's shallower than the length of the plane. So if the plane was standing on its nose, it would be sticking out of the water. But if you get into the Andaman Sea, you're in two and a half miles of water, and that's a whole different ballgame. But you know, at the end of the day, uh, Anderson, what it's going to come down to with no witnesses, not a lot of evidence, we've got to find that plane and retrieve those black boxes with the hope that the information is on those black boxes. But as you know better than anybody, I mean, that can take years. It took, I think, two years in the Air France flight that, that went down between Rio and Paris. Yeah, I was hoping against hope that, uh, you know, the Air France was in, the, in a remote area in very deep water right, 13, and very rugged feet underwater water. mountain range. Right. Yeah, uh, right. Right. And in this case, uh, it's in a heavily trafficked area. It's not remote. It's very shallow water. So, you know, I was hoping that uh, we'd find that X marks the spot of the haystack and then the pieces of the needle would be fairly easy to find. But, you know, uh, you know, again, it's uh, incredibly perplexing. Sean, if this was a, a, a terrorist act, obviously or, or generally, typically, terrorists do like to claim credit for it or some sort of a video would be released. I mean, it's a terrorist act is all about making an impact, a political statement, some sort of a public statement. If nobody knows it's a terrorist act, it's not much of a statement. What, what do you make of that? Yeah, I think that's that you still can't rule terrorism out, but that is one of the uh, the questions that, that a lot of folks have is why hasn't there been some public statement made uh, that, that is typically on the heels of, of a terrorist organization looking to uh, strike fear in the hearts of citizens. They want to, to proclaim uh, that they were behind right. it. So that certainly is, is a concern here. Uh, but I agree with, with some of the other folks in the intelligence community that until you've got collected all the facts, you certainly can't rule that out. Uh, there might be another reason for them not coming forward at this point. If this were perhaps, uh, if it was a terrorist in incident, and I'm purely speculating, this was part of a, a much larger or broader uh, potential act. And for whatever reason, they wouldn't uh, come forward at this point, but at a later time. I see. So you're saying if, it, if it, again, if it was part of a terrorist act and part of a larger operation, that operation may be underway or about to take place, and therefore right. they wouldn't want to tip their hand. Uh, that's certainly a possibility, speculation. Of right. Course. And again, we just simply don't know at this point.